Hey guys, Jessica Juckstock here. I want to talk to you for a few minutes about a topic that is very important to me because I've experienced its effects personally, and that is the subject of low progesterone. So hormones are an interesting thing because I like to think of them as being like the orchestra, um, or rather the orchestra conductors in your body. Um, they tell essentially like every other system of your body how it should function. So if one of the performers or the hormones in your body isn't playing the way that it should, the whole performance is going to sound wrong. Um, one of the most common hormone imbalances I think that women experience is low progesterone. So let's talk a little bit about what progesterone does why you should care if you have low progesterone, and what you can do to increase your progesterone naturally. So progesterone, what it does is, well, let's talk a little bit first about how it's produced. So once a month, if you are ovulating regular, regularly, um, this is like basic sex ed here, right? Your body will release an egg basically on a monthly schedule. Um, before that egg is released, your body produces little to no progesterone. Um, after you ovulate, the there's like the follicle that the egg is released from turns into this small thing called a yellow body, um, or rather the corpus luteum. That is the Latin phrase that means yellow body. And that's what produces the progesterone in your body. So progesterone's main task, what it is essentially there for, is to prepare your body for a pregnancy. Um, but if you're not trying to get pregnant, stick with me because this is important for all women um, who are regularly ovulating or who are still in their childbearing years, we'll put it that way. Its symptoms can still affect you even if you're not trying to have a baby. So in a normal non-pregnant cycle, this small gland inside of your ovary will produce progesterone for roughly 14 days. This phase of your cycle is known as the luteal phase. If you're trying to get pregnant, you may also know it know of it as the two-week wait, um, which is not the most fun thing to try to get through when you are trying to get pregnant and you don't know yet if you're pregnant or not. That's like that two weeks you have to wait before you can take a pregnancy test. So at the end of those two weeks, your corpus luteum will stop producing progesterone and that's when your period starts. It's pretty much like it, the, the progesterone production just stops completely. Um, if you are pregnant, however, like if you got pregnant during that ovulatory phase, the corpus luteum sticks around and it starts to produce progesterone until the end of the first trimester, at which point the placenta takes over and produces your progesterone. So the way that um, progesterone works to, hang on, I've got a notification I need to take care of here. Uh, I don't think it's going to let me do it. Okay, if I disappear for a minute here, bear with me, I will be back. Um, okay, so progesterone prepares your body for pregnancy by basically preventing the ovaries from releasing any other eggs during the cycle. That's why you usually have just a single, single pregnancy if you get pregnant. Um, sometimes your body will release multiple eggs like during a really short window before that progesterone production starts, but then once it starts, your body isn't gonna release any more eggs because it sees that the progesterone is there. It also slightly elevates your body temperature and this slight rise is one of the major signs that makes natural family planning possible. I've talked about natural family planning here in the past, um, but basically part of the process is tracking your body temperature. And when you see that rise, that lets you know that you've ovulated because your body is producing progesterone. And then also thickens and maintains your uterine lining. Um, that's uh, called the endometrium. And that's basically like where all of the like extra blood and stuff is that will feed and nourish your baby while the baby grows if you're pregnant. So if your body does not produce enough progesterone, the lining will not thicken or stay thick enough to support a fertilized egg 
um, to grow a healthy baby. Um, that fertilized egg will either not be able to implant or if it implants, you may experience an early miscarriage. So <clears throat> the question might be, can you get pregnant with low progesterone? And the answer is kind of yes and no. Um, so if the question is, can I get a positive pregnancy test with low progesterone? The answer is definitely yes. I have gotten pregnant several times with low progesterone. Um, if, however, the question is, can I carry a pregnancy to term? The answer is, if your progesterone is low enough, then that's unlikely. And that is why I have had actually now four early miscarriages due to some issues with my progesterone production. Progesterone is absolutely essential to a healthy pregnancy. So if you find yourself in a situation where yours is too low, um, you'll probably need to supplement or find a way to balance your hormones naturally, which is another thing that I talk about a lot. Um, and I'm going to leave some links or at least one link for you guys in the comments or maybe in the description of this video when um, this video is over so that you can read up more if you want to read more about that. So I have both supplemented with progesterone and done some things to balance my hormones naturally. Um, I've made it a lot. I've made a lot of progress with balancing my hormones naturally, but I've also taken progesterone during my pregnancies as um, an extra precaution. So I just noticed something here I need to fix. Sorry, I'm looking at some notes here and realized that I typed something wrong. Okay, fixed it. Um, this is part of what I'm gonna gonna link to you guys in the end, so I want to make sure that I have it in there correctly. So, depending on the severity of your imbalance, you may want a prescription for bioidentical progesterone, or you may even want to take like an over-the-counter progesterone supplement. Like a lot of people will do natural supplements that are made out of wild yams. Um, I think that's the primary thing that um, people use for natural progesterone supplements. So. Let's talk a minute about what causes low progesterone. Um, it's really complicated because hormonal balance is pretty delicate and like I'm not a doctor here, so I'm just telling you guys what I've read. Um, there are a variety of factors that can contri could contribute to low progesterone. One of those is if you have too much estrogen. And there was um, a comment on my post earlier where a girl said that she had estrogen dominance and had started taking a progesterone supplement to try to balance that out. So if your estrogen levels are too high, your body may not be able to produce enough progesterone to compensate for that high level. A lot of factors could make your estrogen too high. Um, your body stores excess estrogen in in body fat. So if you're overweight, that could contribute contribute to be to being estrogen dominant. Sorry, I'm kind of stumbling over my words today. Um, endocrine disruptors, those are basically like, that actually may have been a factor in my most recent miscarriage because I am currently breastfeeding. And um, earlier this month I had a positive pregnancy test and then I wasn't pregnant anymore. So um, breastfeeding is also a factor there. Uh, diet imbalance. If your diet is too high in sugar or grains, you could be throwing off your hormonal your hormonal balance. That has a lot to do with your insulin production. So insulin, blood sugar, um, those are all hormonal things that will affect other hormones in your body. So um, yeah, and also with a diet imbalance, you could be depleting your body of the vitamins that it needs to produce progesterone. For example, vitamins D and B are especially important for progesterone production. So if you're not eating a balanced diet, you may you may not be getting those vitamins that you need um, to produce your progesterone. Another big one is stress. So this is really interesting. The, the sex hormones, like your estrogen and your progesterone, share a common, um, what's it called, precursor hormone um, called pregnenolone. Basically what that means, the precursor hormone idea means that that's like the foundational hormone that the other ones are made out of. So when you are not stressed out, your body will use that pregnenolone to produce progesterone. But when you're stressed, it blocks your progesterone receptors and the adrenals then use that pregnenolone to make cortisol instead. So you're literally hijacking your body's ability to make progesterone if you're overly stressed out. 
Um, and I need to add something else right here. Okay, so then there are also some physical factors and I have a little bit of this going on myself. Um, some physical, like things about your physical, your body can affect your progesterone production. For example, um, I have like a slightly misshapen uterus. Um, it dips like into a heart shape instead of being flat across the top. And this particular defect I've read can make it harder for your body to produce enough progesterone. So that is another issue. Um, so some ways that you can know if you have low progesterone, um, some, some of the symptoms include if you have spotting between your periods, if you have long or heavy periods, if your cycles are shorter than 28 days, um, so you kind of get like the worst of both worlds here. You both ha you have like longer periods and you have less time between them. So it's like sometimes it feels like you're just bleeding all the time. Um, if you have less than 10 days between ovulation and the start of your next period, that means you have a short luteal phase, which since that is dominated by progesterone, if you don't have enough progesterone, then that luteal phase will be short. So if you have less than 10 days, that's really kind of the minimum. You should have, you know, 10 to 14 days between ovulation and the start of your next period. If you have uh, clots during your period, um, difficulty sleeping could be an indicator, sugar cravings. So some of these like are not immediately obvious, but they could be symptoms of low progesterone, um, arthritis, mood swings, anxiety, headaches or migraines, PMS is a little more of an obvious one, and then early miscarriages or infertility. And that infertility could be due to the fact that you may be getting pregnant and not knowing it because you may be having early miscarriages. So one way to get better insight into your progesterone levels is by charting your cycles, and that is, um, that idea of natural family planning, which I mentioned a little bit earlier. So when you, with natural family planning, when you take your basal body temperatures daily and chart your cervical fluid, you should be able to tell when you ovulate. And then from that, you can determine the length of your luteal phase to know if your progesterone levels are where they should. So some ways to increase your progesterone levels naturally if you have determined that you have low progesterone. Um, really important one is to watch your diet, make sure you're getting enough healthy fats, leafy greens, citrus, cut back on your sugar and grains. Um, a good book if you want to go a little more hardcore with your diet is Woman Code by uh, Lisa Vitti is her name. And um, again, I can link to all this stuff in the description of the video. Um, so watch your diet, the next one is to reduce your stress levels because again remember that that pregnenolone if you're stressed out is going to be going to make um, your cortisol instead of your progesterone so some ideas for de-stressing um, take a walk take a bath maybe paint or draw listen to some calming music diffuse some essential oils um, I actually have a list here of um, maybe I don't for essential oils that reduce stress. Um, but we can talk about that if you have questions about that. Um, talking to a friend about whatever you're stressed out about, meditating, praying, breathing deeply, doing some yoga. There are a ton of things that you can do to reduce your stress levels naturally. Um, or at least like make life feel a little bit less <laughs> stressful if you've got a lot of stressful stuff going on. Um... Okay, and then you can also supplement. Take a good multivitamin, make sure you're getting enough levels of, uh, some of the supplements that are most important here for your progesterone levels are vitamin C, vitamin D3, which you get from the sun, so going outside helps too, the B vitamins, and magnesium. And then some, some herbs and stuff that you can try are maca, um, red raspberry leaf, and vitex, which is also known as chaseberry. Vitex is supposed to be really good for boosting your progesterone levels naturally. Um, so I also use a supplement or I guess it's called a serum from Young Living that has, um, a natural progesterone in it. Um, and that has been helpful for me as well. So again, I am going to post a link to a blog post that I wrote on this topic. If you want, would prefer to see it in a written form. Um, and it has links out to some other things that you could find helpful things like how to reduce stress, 
um, some more information about essential oils. And one thing I do want to say about the essential oils links is that um, if you go and read my blog and then you're like, oh, I want to get some essential oils, please, rather than using my links in the blog, talk to the person who told you about this group um, so that they can get you connected, um, get you started with Young Living if that's what you decide to do. Um, so if you guys have any questions, please let me know. Uh, let me know if this is something you've experienced yourself, if there's anything you've tried or anything that's been effective for you in boosting your progesterone levels. Um, and if you guys have anything else you would like to talk about, let me know. I'm trying to be a bit more active in this group here since it's been a little while since we've done much of anything here. Um, so I hope you guys all have a great day and I will talk to you all next time. Bye-bye.